welcome to you all to our ECG sessions this is the first session of our ECG program and uh, I have designed this program very easily for you so that you can learn um, very easily and quickly and uh, we have seven sessions on ECG program this is our first session actually and uh, you will find that our all sessions are made very easy for you okay so today's session is ECG session I think you will enjoy a lot and uh, I know that in basic ECG uh, there are very lot of things to be discussed actually but I think the all those things um, the complicated things are not necessary for you as a physician as we are going to be a doctor of medicine or general practitioner or appearing some exams like FCPS part 1 or MRCP part 1 MRCP part 2 so I think all the uh, complicated things of basic ECG is not uh, needed for every student so I have made this uh, lecture today with very easily so that you can uh, acquire it with very quickly and it will be not very boring actually so let's begin so I am Dr. Sarwar Khan I have passed MBBS uh, from my missing medical college hospital and uh, I am uh, appearing the MRC PSS exam in the coming years I think mm, I have passed MRC part 2 recently and also I am appearing FCPS part 2 in our country so it's my uh, identity actually so uh, the main thing is that about the ECG is that you can diagnose about 90% of ECG without 90% uh, of ECG very correctly without knowing anything about the ECG that is a fact so why this is because uh, actually 90% of the ECG are normal ECG so after getting an ECG if you write the in the comment section that it's a uh, normal ECG so I think 90 in the 90% case uh, you will be correct but uh, about 10% case are abnormal ECG and for this abnormal ECG uh, you have to learn about how to read ECG correctly okay so uh, for the rest of the 10% uh, uh, our session is beginning here actually so so in the um, uh, very beginning of the ECG I have to discuss about the how the ECG paper are formed and uh, what's the uh, basic uh, calculations and what's the basic things you have to do uh, before reading an ECG okay so this is the way we actually do the ECG like you can see in the picture that is the a man or the patient is lying and uh, Mm, there are some cables that is attached to his body in the in the chest and the arms and the legs also and you can see the patient is very relaxed so it, this process is not painful for a patient but you can see that uh, this woman is not happy actually uh, actually for a technician or a doctor uh, who is uh, who is actually apart from this uh, these techniques or technician actually uh, it's a complicated thing for him or her because you have to put a lot of wire very correctly uh, so that the ECG paper is correct if you place this uh, this electrical wire in incorrectly actually then the ECG paper will be incorrect so it is very important to place these cables in the correct position and also for a, as a physician for you it's very important to know whether it is uh, placed is correctly or not because if it is not correctly placed then your reading will be wrong so so there are some techniques actually so from where we can know whether this is is in standard position or not so the basic thing is that uh, we put some wires correctly in different positions of the patient then uh, the electrical activity of the heart we measured in a graphical presentation this is called actually ECG and in this galvanometer the ECG paper comes through from this uh, machines actually and we read this ECG 
if you uh, just uh, check an ECG paper, yeah, actually this ECG paper is like that, and uh, you will uh, see that there are some big boxes and also some small boxes in in the in the large boxes actually and in this EC, these boxes are actually the graph paper for the ECG paper in ECG uh, we have some standard uh, calculations for any patient so standardization is very important to, to measure because uh, if it is not in standard ECG so it is very possible for an uh, examiner that uh, actually in, for a physician that it may be it will be very bad or it, it will be not measurable for him so it is very important to uh, take the ECG or do the ECG in standard position okay so in the ECG paper uh, we actually there are two axes here one is X axis another is Y axis in the particle X axis in the horizontal position as you can see here and Y axis in the vertical position in X axis position we actually uh, measure the time the, of the actually the speed of the paper that comes through the galvanometer and in the Y axis actually we uh, actually we see the voltage of the ECG or whole voltage of the ECG paper so uh, there are some standard uh, calculations for this x axis and y axis in x in x axis that means in time uh, we the speed of the ECG paper should be 25 millimeter per second so it is the standard for the ECG if it is very sp speedful more than uh, 25 then 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 the ECG would not look very standard and you will miss the ECG very quick easily and in case of voltage actually we we stand we keep the standard that is for the ecg and it is uh, 10 millimeter or uh, actually it is 10 millimeter uh, 10 millimeter indicates one millivolt so one millivolt is the standard for an ecg and if sometimes it is written in the ecg paper that is 10 millimeter and sometimes it is not written actually uh, there may be some sign that indicate this this voltage like an ECG paper there may be some sign like this if it is cover two large square that it means it is standard ECG that means one millivolt and if it is just a five five small uh, small square or one large square then it is not standard and it is below standard we call it low voltage ECG so uh, if you find this kind of ECG or this kind of uh, voltage then you will expect some very narrow or very small uh, amplitude of the ECG so it is very important to uh, see the standard of the ECG and uh, we keep the standard that is speed for the ECG that is in the x-axis that is the 25 mm, uh, millimeter per second and for the y-axis that is volt it is 1 millivolt or 10 small square okay uh, it's an ECG example and as you can see here and the left side of the ECG there is a indication or sign that indicates uh, the voltage of the ECG and as you can see here uh, that that includes two large square that means it is an stand it is a standard ECG voltage okay and uh, and and in the second ECG you can see that the this sign is only covers about 10 small square but not 20 small square or two large square so it is below standard as you can see in the waves and is here is very small for this low voltage so firstly when you will get an ECG firstly you have to check the voltage of the ECG and speed of the ECG okay as you can see here in the first ECG it is uh, the speed of the paper is 25 millimeter per second so it is a standard for the speed and also for this ECG it is standard for the voltage but for the EC, for that ECG in the below it is not standard for the voltage okay so here the criteria of low voltage is tracing in standard limb lead that is less than 5 millimeter and in the chest lead that is less than 10 millimeter actually what is this 
uh, in chest lid we actually measure uh, about 10 millimeter for the standard and the limit that is the less than 5 millimeter of standardization we will talk ab about it in later okay so what is the causes of low voltage ecg tracing that is incorrect standardization that i was talking uh, now and uh, if patient is obese and if there is any pericardial effusion chronic constrictive pericarditis myxedema emphysema or hypothermia so all those things except the first one uh, if, suppose that you are doing the ecg in the standard uh, voltage but patient may give the or patients ECG may give about the low voltage ECG because of this condition. So first of thing is that if it is not standard or below the voltage, it may be a very low voltage ECG. And and the other thing is that you are doing the ECG with standard voltage, but you may get very low voltage ECG for these clinical conditions. So now the ECG leaves. What are the ECG leaves in the ECG paper? When uh, you will do an ECG for a patient, you will see that some electrical uh, things are placed in the chest of the patient. These uh, leads are called chest leads. Okay, so th uh, there is uh, there are six chest lead that is placed on the patient chest. That is V1 to V6. V1 is placed in the right intercostal space. That is in the fourth intercostal space in the right side, and V2 is placed in the left side of the left front fourth intercostal space just lateral to the manubrium sterni okay and then v4 v4 is placed in the midline in the clavicular midline and it is in the fifth intercostal space between the v2 and v4 v3 is placed just between v2 and v4 next v6 v6 is placed in the fifth intercostal space in the anterior axillary line okay and between the v4 and v6 v5 is placed just between v4 and v6 these all the leads that is called chest lead okay and you will see uh, that uh, when a patient is going for ecg there are some other leads that is placed on the patient's limbs these are called these are called limb leads basically three limb leads are placed on the patient's limbs that is in the right arm or right hand and left arm or left hand and left leg or left thigh this is called limb leads another leads is placed on the right side that is for the neutral position for the electrical impulse okay actually in ecg what we do we actually place some cameras on different positions of the heart and we took some pictures so that we can uh, we can take a three dimensional picture from the for the heart and an ecc paper is a, is a just a paper that is uh, actually in two dimensional but we have to take the three dimensional picture for this reason we actually place in different leads in different positions so that we can take in different pictures and different in position and that is would be in three dimensional okay so this is these cameras are just our leads of the patient that we place on the patient's chest and hands so this uh, picture is showing that uh, these are the leads that is v1 to v6 actually we we take some pictures uh, of the ecg of the or electrical uh, electrical areas of the heart so that we can gain gain a very good picture for this patient's heart so we have four leads for, for an ecg six is chest leads and six are limb leads six limb leads we were discussing about the limb leads like about the patient in three positions that is right arm or right hand and left arm or left hand and the left leg or left thigh these are the limb leads actually these limb leads are unipolar limb leads there are some other three leads that is called bipolar leads that is lead one two and three in lead what is lead one two and three lead one two uh, one two and three are nothing but a vector for the electrical conductance so lead one two and three has no physical existence but has electrical existence like this like this when this current will pass from here to here that will uh, cause the lead one 
and when this pa current passes through the right arm to left arm in between them they, then it will produce the lead 2 and similarly when the current will pass from the left leg to left arm that will create the lead 3 okay so uh, this is the actual picture for a patient when we do ECG for the patient as you can see here there are some chest lead that is placed on the chest of the patient uh, and it is in the uh, fourth uh, third fourth intercostal space then it is in the fifth intercostal space and this is v1 v2 this is v4 and uh, there is the v6 actually this should be in this position and this is v6 and between the v4 and v6 v5 is placed so these are the chest lead and these are the limb leads as you can see here the different colors uh, in here in here and also uh, there is another lead will be placed in the patient left left lower limb so please don't sleep we have something for you take a cup of coffee let's begin okay this slide is also a very important topic in basic ECG and this is the one of the fundamentals for the ECG so we have to know about the blood supply of a heart um, and it will be needed in every aspect of the ECG reading so you can see here there are two types of blood supply in the heart that is anteriorly placed and at one of the another is posteriorly placed in anteriorly there is this, uh, the main blood vessel is the left main coronary artery then it will branch to left circumflex artery this circumflex artery will go in the left side of the heart and it will go in the posteriorly and another is anteriorly placed it is from the from the left uh, main coronary artery that is the left anterior descending artery okay and uh, in the posteriorly the the artery is responsible that is right coronary artery this right coronary artery will will go in the right side of the heart and it will, it will be go, it will go in the posteriorly of the heart and importantly this right coronary artery will supply in the sa node and av node so if right coronary artery is blocked or any hampered so it will affect the sa node conductance and also av node conductance so you may expect uh, some heart block for this patient okay so right coronary artery very important and the majority of the patient about 90 percent case the sa node and av node are supplied by the right coronary artery that's why we called it right dominance okay another small uh, arterial supply is also present and you have to know about it like in diagonal branch one diagonal branch two in from the circumflex artery there may be marginal artery okay so it will be needed for our ecg so this is the basic ecg uh, blood supply uh, for the heart and it is very important to be known now cardiac electrophysiology uh, for basic ecg knowing uh, you have to know about the basic cardiac electrophysiology how the electrical impulses goes through the heart we know that uh, in sa node the impulse has automaticity and then SA, sa node can produce impulses automatically so it has the capacity to produce the impulses so from sa node uh, impulse will be generated and uh, it will be passed to the av node from from the in the internodal pathway so so the in uh, in briefly sa node will produce impulses and it will propel the impulses from AC node to AV node. In AV node, uh, this will pass the impulse from the bundle of his and that then right bundle of branch and left bundle of branch. Then it will uh, it will propel the uh, impulses from through the uh, ventricles. Okay, like this. Firstly, firstly this intraventricular septum will be depolarized. Then the other part of the ventricles. So these are the basic electrical impulse pathway or electrophysiology of the heart. So I am telling again, SNH will imp generate impulse and uh, this impulse will go from the SNH to the AV node, AV node, then AV node to a bundle of his, then his Parkinson system that is right bundle branch, left bundle branch, then the ventricles. So what are the properties of the cardiac muscles? 
four basic properties essential for functioning of the heart as the effective pump of the cardiovascular systems that is that are excitability and cardiac muscle may become excitable very easily and automatic auto automaticity actually and conductivity and contractility automaticity means sa node can produce impulse automatically and a, and it can propel the impulse to other parts of the heart and this uh, this impulse can conduct very easily from heart one part of the another and the cardiac muscle may contract as its own okay so these are the properties of the cardiac muscle so this uh, also the cardiac automatic cardiac electrophysiology that i was talking so ac not can produce impulse automatically that is 60 to 100 beats per minute and av not also can produce impulse but in reduced number that is 45 to 50 beats per minute okay then uh, from ac not to from av not that is the internal pathway then av not then bundle of his and right bundle branch and left bundle branch then it will depolarize the whole ventricle okay so if you look carefully uh, here there should be at first uh, in, in the ventricle interventricular septum will be depolarized then the vent other parts of the ventricles these uh, graphs or this uh, table is very important for you in every aspect of the ecg learning and i will show this kind this table in repeatedly so that you can memorize it very well so uh, in ecg paper we we shouldn't uh, read the ecg in haphazardly rather we should read the ecg in systematically so in the systematic way to read the ecg properly we have to follow some areas or territory that will help us uh, to read the ecg very very quickly and also systematically so first of all you have to know what are the leads that indicates the territory of the heart and what the heart are the arterial supply of this territory so heart uh, in interoceptal territory of the heart uh, the ecg leads are responsible for its changes like for v1 to v4 and it will supplied by the left anterior descending artery as you can remember this uh, this anterior descending artery this artery is responsible for anterior septal area or territory changes and uh, 2 3 avf this leaves that in the that indicates the inferior leads or inferior surface of the heart and it it is supplied by the right coronary artery and one avf leads of the ecg that indicates the high lateral territory of the heart and uh, this territory is supplied by the first diagonal branch of the left anterior descending artery and sometimes circumflex artery and one avl 56 not only one avl here but also one avl and also 56 it it indicates the lateral surface of the heart one avl was high lateral and one avl 56 will be lateral and it will be supplied by the left circumflex artery and in case of posterior territory of the heart that leads are responsible uh, actually i will tell about this ch ecg changes later so that you can uh, you can you can understand very easily and it is supplied by the right coronary artery and left circumflex artery so these are the arterial supply don't uh, worry about this uh, table right now because when we will cover the all the leaves and all the waves then it will be easy for you and i will show you this table in repeatedly so that you can memorize it very well just today uh, in the last uh, in the i am in the last of the session i'm just showing this table and it is very important for you so uh, these are the territory actually we uh, actually go systematically in this way like one avl that is high lateral one avl five six that is lateral and two three avf that is inferior surface and v1 to v4 is anteroceptal and if you do, if you call it very specifically then v1 and v2 that represents right ventricle and v3 v4 is uh, indicates that is the septal area of the heart and 5 6 is lateral position of the heart okay
so don't worry about this uh, systematic way uh, rather we will discuss this repeatedly in the coming sessions so please be patient so nerve supply uh, in nerve supply you know that in sympathetic nerve supply and parasympathetic nerve supply are responsible for the nerve supply of the heart in sympathetic uh, system the heart and heart rate will be increased and when parasit parasympathetic nervous system will be activated then heart heart rate will be decreased you know it i know so this is the ecg actually an ecg waves uh, and uh, we'll discuss it uh, in the next session about detail all of the waves like p wave q wave qrs complex and t wave and just i am showing these waves uh, today to just a glimpse a glimpse of it and i will discuss this uh, this all those things in the next class don't worry about it so these are the for today today is the very basic things and i try to make it very easy for you so that you can uh, you wouldn't be bored actually uh, basic things are very complicated things i know and for this reason i think all those things are not necessary for you hot are necessary i have discussed here just remember this and uh, you will be able to read the ecg very properly in the coming days just work with us okay so this is the last session this is the last slide for this uh, for today i hope uh, you have enjoyed and you have understood and uh, we'll discuss about the waves and the different intervals in the next sessions so see you in the next session and thank you for your patience hearing today